What's up there YouTubers and fellow riders, the Kim is back at it again in the garage hooking up another DIY for you explaining what this dot is and the importance of it. Okay guys, so many of you might have seen these, a dot on your tire and not know exactly what it is and this dot is actually placed here on purpose and it's from the, manu the tire manufacturer and it's actually the heavy spot in the tire. Now generally, um, when you see this dot and you're putting on a tire, you're supposed to place this dot near on the stem, the valve stem right here. Now, I recently I've been trying to diagnose an issue with the front kind of bouncing up and down, feeling like an uneven row. So I uh, don't know if you guys recall, I recently uh, put out a video where I, I balanced my tire and using the static wheel balancer and uh, just a homegrown way of doing it now they perform this same method as well just using a, a, a threaded rod and two and two uh, jack stands uh, to hold up the tire and uh, while this mess method will get you out of a pinch it is not a precise method uh, to per se uh, to you know fine tune the heavy spot in the tire uh, will it work? Yes, but uh, it, it does have its you know pros and cons. So, uh, like I said, it's something that you want to use uh, to get you out of a pinch when you don't have the proper tools. Now, uh, with that said, uh, I have been experiencing, like I said, a, a bouncing issue with the front tire. It just kind of feels wobbly, uneven, and uh, I was kind of wondering why, um, even after taking my tire back to the shop for a second time, that uh, I still, I still get this. No, I, did, I didn't stop and um, think about the, the dot placement or the heavy spot in the tire, you know, even after it was balanced. And um, so looking at it now, after I jacked it up, I'm working on the other side. I was working on the other side, um, had an oil leak uh, from the stator area and I had to seal that up. But uh, while I was down here, I wanted to see if I could troubleshoot uh, this issue with the tire being uh, somewhat bouncy in the front. Um, so I went ahead and took a look and Sure enough, whoever put this tire on does not know how to put on tires because this should have been placed at the valve stem. And uh, with that said, you need to uh, account for it. When it's placed at the valve stem, uh, with this heavy spot at the valve stem, you need to, this helps you fine tune it. And when you're fine tuning it by placing your weights on, you need to place the weights on the opposite side of the tire. And uh, this kind of balances everything out. Now, as you can see, if I roll this back, um, this dot is right here, and the weights are placed directly across from it, and that kind of is, you know tells you that this is true, that this is the heavy spot, because in order to balance out this, this rim and tire, they needed to place the weights on the other side. But I still think I still have a heavy spot in the rim that hasn't been accounted for since this dot is not in the right place. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, and I'm gonna go ahead and balance it with my own homemade balancer. Alright guys, so what I got here is my own homegrown 3D printed static wheel balancer that I made my design and made myself. Um, I plan on you know selling this uh, to you guys if you guys are interested and uh, to help balance it, help you with balancing out your own wheels and to see that uh, you, can, you can never really trust a shop's work when it comes to um, really caring about your bike. Um, so what I have here are two static wheel balancers um, that I made and uh, as part of the kit that I'm gonna be selling, um, I'm just only gonna sell the actual housing that holds the bearings in place and, uh, and the actual cones which keep the, the wheel balanced and in place while you are uh, trying to find its heavy spot. But uh, in the kit, plan to sell two cones and two of these housings and let you guys get your own smooth rod, uh, grub screws, I'm using um, a butterfly uh, threaded screw and uh, get your own nuts and bolts. Altogether, this is probably costing no more than like 10, 10 to $12 worth at your local hardware store. So, okay, so let's get started.
Okay guys, so I got the wheel up on the jack stands and my uh, new and improved uh, static wheel balancer. Um, the theory here is that I believe that my wheel has a heavy spot even after I took it back for the second, second time to the shop and they placed weights on there because it didn't have any weights at all. And so my theory is that from them using uh, the homegrown method that this wheel is not properly or truly balanced. Now, even given to the fact that I noticed that the dot is in the wrong place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin this wheel around up, okay? And I'm just gonna let it go. Now, if it's properly balanced, this wheel is not gonna move. If it's improperly balanced, you're gonna see it do a pendulum effect and fall to and finally rest at its heavy spot. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. I'm placing the weights up on top. Now remember that this wheel is supposedly properly balanced. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, proof that one, my static wheel balancer works. And uh, two, that this wheel is improperly, improperly balanced. Now I went ahead and uh, got up on eBay and I got myself some uh, Motion Pro's um, uh, wheel weights. These are black wheel weights and these are 144 pieces of 1 8 ounce size segments. Alright, so I'm just waiting for this, uh, this wheel to stop and uh, once it stops, I'm going to know that the very bottom of this, uh, of this rim and tire is the heavy spot. And once it stops, I'm going to go ahead and I already cut myself out uh, a piece of tape to go ahead and put it on the very bottom. And you can use anything you want, tape, if you got a marker, go ahead and mark the tire. But um, we're going to take a couple of these pieces of weights and um, find that heavy spot. So my heavy spot is, I'm going to say it's right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece of these, these weights. Now these are one eighth inch weights or I'm sorry one ounce one and an eighth ounce weights and these are smaller than the ones that they use uh, at the rim and tire shops these are actually 0.25 and these are the larger weights now it takes two of these weights to equal just one of these so in essence you're gonna double stack them to equal one so whatever you choose, you can get up on uh, eBay and uh, find uh, these type of weights, 0.25 in, in any color in silver and black. And uh, if the rim is a different color, you can go ahead and grab a, a spray can and spray paint them the color that you want. So uh, just to give you a tip there. But uh, as you can see, it's always falling back to that, that heavy portion of the rim. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a couple of weights here and place them on the lip and use a piece of tape to actually hold them in place. Uh, it does have an adhesive backing, but we don't wanna take off this backing just yet because we wanna make sure that we have the right number of weights on there to counterbalance it. So give me a second while I go ahead and cut some of these out and uh, we'll get back to you. All right guys, so now that the, the wheel has come to a rest, um, we found out that this is our heavy spot and we've marked it. Now we wanna place our weights on the opposite side to counterbalance it. Now, I went ahead and cut out a couple of strips of these weights. Uh, the sucky part is that uh, since the tire was, wasn't put on properly, that I'm going to have all kinds of weights all over my uh, all over my rim. But uh, I'm going to kind of split it up to make it look a little more decent. Um, at any rate, um, this is our this is our heavy spot, so we need to put some weights up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out sections of four, since one of these is equal to one of these larger weights. Um, so technically this would be, four of them would be two of these larger weights, two of these uh, uh, 0.25 ounces. So I went ahead and placed two on a piece of tape, taped them up, and I'm going to actually tape them to the rim, opposite of the heavy side. So let's go ahead and place that up there. Let's tape that up there and see if that's enough. So we're going to let our rim do its own thing. I'm just going to go ahead and let it go and it should not spin, okay. or and if it does, very, very minimal. Now obviously this is moving kind of quick, so that means we don't have enough weight, counterweight on here to counterweight the heavy spot in here. So what I'm going to do is 
Let's give it another turn. Let it go. No, as you see, I didn't give it no movement at all. It's just rolling on its own. So we are still heavy in this spot. So I'm gonna add another set of weights on here. And um, this time I'm gonna add this one to the opposite side. Bring it up over here. And fix it right across from the other side. And this is plan how I plan to uh, distribute the weight so it doesn't look so ugly so I don't have a big old bulky pile of weights on one side. So, okay, got my weight fixed on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it back halfway. You wanna do this in quarter turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. And it should stay exactly where it's at. A little off. Still falling to the heavy side. Actually, it's not. All right, then give another quarter turn. Put the blue tape on the bottom side. And one thing I am noticing, I'm not directly across from my mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and move, reposition my weights. It looks like this weight is balanced. Uh, it took a couple more weights than I wanted to put on here, but uh, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Now, <clears throat> like I said, it kind of sucks because I have to have all these weights. Had, they, had the shop done the job properly and with the right tools, this would have been, you know, I would have been a, a totally satisfied customer. But uh, because they did a half-ass job, I have to go back and, and, and do it again myself. Alright guys, so while I finish up here, I still gotta go ahead and peel off the, uh, the tape and, and remove the adhesive and stick the weights in its place. Be sure to always clean your rim uh, really well before you stick those weights on there so it gets, uh, so it gets nice and sticky and it stays in place, they don't go flying off. But uh, at any rate, if you guys are interested in purchasing um, my static wheel balancer, um, what I plan to sell is just this piece, uh, which is the housing for the bearings, and uh, which are, will come to, and also the cone. And like I said, you guys keep the, the, the cost cheap and I plan to sell these probably for no more than uh, uh, about 10 bucks. And to keep the cost cheap and to make it more affordable so you can build it when you're ready to build it, um, you're going to go ahead and purchase the, the smooth rod, bearings, and nut and bolts in order to make the whole thing work. You know, like I said, this will probably cost you no more than uh, 10, 12 dollars uh, in parts right here. And uh, with the 10 dollar cost of this, it's pretty cheap. As you can see, it, perfect, it works perfectly fine. Fine tuned it, even found the imperfections that the shop couldn't even find. And it's always better that you do it yourself. So if you are interested, uh, send me an email at uh, jamesmorenojr at gmail.com and uh, we can work out the shipping, shipping details. But 10 bucks is all I plan to sell the plastic housing and the uh, cones that allow you to keep your wheel straight as always guys i hope you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit the like button if, or hit the dislike button if you didn't like my tutorial um 
you know, I'm trying to, I plan to sell these to actually get more, um, more things here, you know, upgrade my shop a little bit, get a little better tools and maybe some better recording equipment as well. Uh, so I can bring you better videos and or better quality videos. But uh, if uh, if you haven't done so already, click that bell button to receive my updates. I do. I'm constantly working on my bike. I'm at 98,000 miles now, and uh, you know I gotta fix a lot of things. So more videos to come if you want to see them. And uh, if you're feeling a little bit generous, the donation link is down below in the descriptions. And uh, if you want to donate a buck or two, and or help me get another Red Bull to keep the uh, energy going and uh, the thoughts flowing. So as always, I'll see you next problem.